This dry dock is a hundred years old. Belonged to my daddy and his daddy and his daddy before. I'm the fourth generation. This is the oldest business on Bidal Fouche. It's a hundred years that we're here. The water used to always stay way back here. And look, when we, when we pick up a boat, we always we always working with our feet in the water. Land sinking, the land sinking. As you can see, the front yard is soggy, even though the tide is not extremely high. When the tide does get higher, this whole yard fills with water. Again, when this land was first settled, you could put the house on the ground and it would be high enough to stay dry. Now you have to actually elevate the house. I wish you had seen what I've seen. I've seen islands as big as maybe a half a mile long, maybe a quarter mile wide. Mm -hmm. That's no longer there and it's only been 25 years. It's just totally gone. This used to be actually land you could walk on. It evolved into marsh and now it's going into open water. Since about 1930, we've lost about 1,900 square miles. In fact, there are some areas here we've lost four feet in the last 100 years. This is a cemetery and we did not build cemeteries in marsh. This land was actually at least four feet higher than it is today. We lost three feet of that to subsidence and probably one foot to sea level rise. People who live on the coast know what it's like to live on a landscape that changes in real time. But coastlines change over the long term as well. Since the 1930s, Louisiana's coast has lost over 2,000 square miles of land, an area larger than the state of Delaware. Barrier islands, roadways, even entire communities have disappeared. Wendell Curol is on the front lines protecting his community by maintaining its levee walls and flood protection systems. Levee, French word for raise. You want to get your levee as high as you can above the water line so that when the storms come and push high water, your levee is higher than the water the storm can push. It's that simple. Elevation is a salvation from inundation. For centuries, surveyors have hammered brass disks called benchmarks into the ground to use as reference points for measuring elevation. Their job is more complex today because sea level has been rising due to increased global temperature, which melts ice on land and expands the water in the ocean. At the same time, land has been sinking this is called subsidence and is due to flood management of the Mississippi River, which has deprived the delta of sediment. Engineers in Louisiana use global positioning systems to measure both sea level rise and subsidence. So the benchmarks were subsiding along the road. They went from maybe seven feet to five feet. So all of a sudden, all the elevations were off and I had this eureka moment saying, this is not high enough. So we hired a local engineer using GPS uh, technology, and we found that the levee was about 18 inches low. So we're raising the levee, trying to take care of sea level rise, take care of the subsidence issue, take care of the marsh laws that we have, but also immediately this season to try to protect ourselves better from hurricanes. The levee protects people in South Lafouche from storms that roll in from the Gulf. Along the bayou, flooding and disruption have become the new normal because storm protection and flood drainage systems were built for an era when storm and surge were less severe. You, know, you look right now and you can see that the bayou is the same level as almost the ground, ground they're walking on. That wasn't like that, I remember back in the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. So even with the high tides or when you get a heavy rainstorm, this whole place just becomes a lake out here. Oh yeah, this place, just, the water just funnels through here. Yeah. You know, no matter if it's just no, you don't even need a hurricane. These are elevations along the curb. What we're going to do today is take some elevation shots along this drainage system and compare it to what the designers did in, in the late 60s so we can determine uh, what steps to take to correct this drainage problem. Elevation here is a 0 0.420. Just barely above sea level yeah. right now. What we're going to do literally is walk across the road, have him basically put it right on the top of the surface of Bayou Lafouge, and we'll get a water elevation right now today and see what the elevation is compared to here. Water elevation is at a 0.513. Okay, so the, actually the water levels in Bayou Lafouge right now are actually higher than the drain system that we just measured. 
the bayou, rather than being it a source of where all the stormwater is draining into, is now the flood source that's actually threatening these communities. The old way of doing things no longer functions. You have to always question, does do things still work? We finally have enough accurate data and accurate instrumentation to be able to tell us exactly what's going on. Elevation of water is 0.5. So no matter what you write down, no matter what the formulas are, observation, observation, observation. That's what science is based on. Science is about observations. It doesn't matter whether you have an engineer coming from MIT or uh, the Corps of Engineers from Washington. We question everything it said because nobody cares about this place like we do. People ask why you want to be here, but you say, I want to be here. I got the jobs, I got my family. You saw me, I'm a crabber. Yeah. That's my livelihood. I mean, without that, I'm 60 years old, you know? What am I going to do? So. It's a working coast. We have people who shrimp, oyster, crab for a living. We have people who support oil that's uh, world class oil. We're building the levee as high as we can afford right now. How far into the future, I don't know. Can't guarantee that we won't have to raise it some more or that it will get too expensive to raise that we'll finally have to move out. Bayou residents can see how fast the landscape is changing. Accurate, real-time information gives them the confidence they need to face hard choices. The threat to these coastal populations is growing at a rate that you, know, you, you don't see anywhere else in the United States. With the present trends that we are seeing coming from the Grand Isle Tide Station, the coastal landscape today across 12,000 square miles of Louisiana's coastal zone will be inundated by the end of the century. And that's an important lesson to take to other coastal states and the fact that their time and their timelines and the challenges they may be facing may be longer in coming, but the same issues and the same need to collaborate to find the best response to those trends and those rising sea levels is really something that we can learn from coastal Louisiana. I'll leave you with that one. <laughs>